So the other day I was at a party with all my friends. And I was thinking about something and someone made the comment that they could really see the gears turning in my head. Gears. Turning. Let's put some extra detail on that vague idea. So right now, we have a mini lathe. But if we had the milling cross slide that I got a few videos back, we now have a mini horizontal milling machine, or at least something kind of close to it. Now the question becomes, how do we take this setup and use it to make scrap? And use it to make some parts? First and foremost, I think we're going to take the simple approach of using some of those gear cutters, uh, rather than try to come up with some elaborate hobbing setup. Uh, and so I went ahead and picked up some of these import gear cutting attachments. Uh, these are Diametral Pitch 16 uh, gear cutters. And then that simply leaves us with needing a way to accurately rotate the gear blank. And to be honest, I flipped and flopped a bunch about how best to do this. Uh, this drawing is super vague though, so let me cat up a prototype and we can talk a little bit more about it. So you probably see where I'm going with this, but the short and sour explanation is we have this holder thing set up uh, where we can mount a gear blank on a piece of threaded rod that's allowed to rotate freely. To get around needing to manually control the rotation of the blank, we then have this gear train assembly leading to a stepper motor that will use our programming skills to program uh, to automatically rotate to the correct position each time we press a button. Do I see the irony in using gears to make my gear maker? Yes, but I wanted to try it out. Let's 3D print a prototype and see if this is any hope of actually working like I intended. I was trying to be fancy there and add a little lead-in chamfer to the end of this, um, but all I've succeeded in doing is rolling over that thread and rendering it completely inoperable. See the struggles I go through trying to look pretty for you folks? Admittedly, a little bit of an oversight on my part, I ended up facing off the threaded rod again and then gave it a proper taper to make it easier to align in the holder. Okay, our prototype mechanical parts are done, and so now it's time to work on the electronics. And because writing code and wiring stuff up is not very interesting to watch, I'm going to go do that and then circle back and we can talk about it. Okay, I know this looks like a lot of rainbow spaghetti, but I assure you it is not nearly as complicated as it seems. What it does is when you press down on the rotary encoder, it gives us a little option to set the number of teeth that we want to cut into the gear. So let's say four in this case. We press the encoder again to set the number of teeth. And then whenever we press this button, the stepper will advance by some amount of rotation based on how many teeth we've programmed in. Seems to work pretty well. Now this is a pretty bulky setup. Uh, I just put this together while I was prototyping everything. So I think I'm going to take this and I'm going to shrink it down and wire everything up on some perf board and then get this in a nice enclosure and we should be good to test out this prototype. Okay, that's awesome. So it works pretty well exactly as we're expecting. Um, unfortunately, there is way too much backlash uh, in this gear here, or this gear train assembly here. Uh, so there is no way this is going to work in our actual setup. Which is somewhat unfortunate. On the bright side, there isn't too much play in this uh, threaded rod holding assembly, so that's good. Uh, we can use this kind of as the base of what we want the final thing to look like. Um, and all we need to do is figure out a way to mount this motor uh, directly coupled to the shaft here. And that shouldn't be too bad. It's just a quick CAD redesign. Uh, we should be back in business. So the new design is pretty much the same as last, except it now directly couples the motor to the gear holding shaft and is constructed from some aluminum L brackets and two plates that I cut out using the modified 3018 that should provide some extra alignment capability to the setup. Now that the main body is done, we can move on to the auxiliary pieces, the first of which will be this bushing that we'll use to hold the bottom side of the rod. And that means it's time for some fun with the lathe! Whoa, 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 hang on there, racing stripes. Before we do anything, we need to get the tailstock more accurately aligned. And you know what that means? Time for a new tool. This test bar should do the trick to get everything aligned. I don't have a Morris Taper 3 dead center though, so I had to make do with putting the Morris Taper 2 dead center that I have into the chuck and then spending a slightly annoying amount of time carefully tapping it into place. With that lined up, it's almost time to get everything aligned, but I've been having some trouble with this dial indicator. 
the screw that's supposed to hold it in place and keep it from rotating about this axis doesn't quite apply enough clamping pressure, making it really easy to throw this thing off. To fix this, I thought I would get one of these little washers to apply a bit of extra force to- Dude, are you crazy? What? It's the middle of winter. That's a spring washer. Now that that's in place and secure, we can get back to the high octane alignment action. I'll skip over most of the details here. There was some maneuvering sideways and some height adjustment done by removing a couple of the soda can shims that I'd put in there earlier. It's not super eventful, but it's cool to finally be doing work that requires this extra little bit of accuracy. Okay, okay, let's finally get around to doing some machining here. The first step is going to be facing out the material and using the aligned tailstock to get a hole drilled in the center. Unfortunately, I still don't own any reamers, so I thought I would try using an end mill to see if it would give a better surface finish on the inside of the bushing. It turned out alright, but at some point down the line I definitely need to cave and get a package of those import reamers just to handle stuff like this. I was originally planning to cut this threaded rod down to use as a gear holder, but after some flailing around a bit, I can't think of a good way to hold this in the chuck to ensure concentricity between the thread outer diameter and the cut down section that's going to ride in the bushing we just made. Let me know in the comments if there's some good trick that I don't know about to fix that, um, but I think that leaves us with the option of turning a component in one setup, which means we'll need to do some single point threading, which is going to be a first for me. I used an online calculator to determine the gears that I should be using, and started removing the existing gears, or more accurately, trying to remove the gears. The metal gear at the beginning of the chain is completely wedged in place, and I can only think of one solution that wouldn't risk breaking anything. With another tool in hand, I took another shot at removing the metal gear, but of course, the claws of the gear cutter wouldn't fit. I tried some pretty sketchy solutions that I don't want to talk about, uh, but eventually just gave up and cut the claws down with a hacksaw until they fit. Words cannot describe how happy I was to finally get this gear off the lathe. Now that that's finally over with, let's finally get this thing set up and get to work cutting some threads. Just as a sanity check, let's look at the- That doesn't look right. Oh no. Yep, that would do it, which means the gears we just installed are completely wrong. I had made the assumption that because I had the Imperial cross slide, uh, I would also get an Imperial lead screw on the lathe. I didn't think to check, and apparently that wasn't the case. Okay, so with new correct gears installed for the M8x1 threads with a 1.5mm lead screw, uh, let's get this material ready and get some steel machining done on this lathe. Yikes, that is not great, um, but I think this one is my fault and not the lathe's fault. I adjusted the speeds a bit to work better with the carbide inserts I use and reduced the tool overhang, which worked a lot better. Now that our surface finish doesn't look like garbage, we can begin to do the oh-so-familiar mark, cut, measure, and repeat to get all our features in place. I got as close as I could before the carbide cutters refused to work and then finished up the final few thousandths with some emery cloth. Nice. Now for the moment we have all been waiting for. I added a little thread gutter in for the threading tool to fall into and crossed my fingers and hoped for the best. And I don't know why I was so nervous about this. This worked extremely well. The thread cutter is way sharper than the inserts I was using and it cuts the steel like it's butter. So satisfying. And okay, admittedly I may be a little bit biased and also inexperienced, but I think these threads look pretty dang good. Okay, technically I guess this next step is optional. You could just buy an arbor to hold the gear cutters, but we've got the material and I feel like it's way more fun if we make our own. The game plan for this is to try and turn it all out of a single piece of material. Speaking of material, after working with that steel and dealing with all that chatter cutting the steel, I promise to never take aluminum for granted again. The surface finish is just so beautiful. What was that I was just saying? Gotta make sure to add that all-important chamfer. Cool, now that that washer is done, we can move along to the arbor. And there's only really one critical feature on this, which is the fit between the cutter and the arbor, so let's tackle that first. 
After going back and forth a bit and testing out the fit and then cutting further as needed, I eventually got it fitting pretty well perfectly. Now for the slog of removing a ton of material from the body of this, and I think this is going to be good to cut through speedy montage style because this was super not exciting to do with these cutters. I really need to get myself some aluminum inserts. The next feature to cut is the hole that will get the threads for the retaining bolt. And I didn't quite have the right drill, but because this is aluminum, I figure we can get away with making the hole slightly undersized and everything should work out fine. I started the tap by holding it in the tailstock to try to keep everything aligned, but I managed to find a way to make it crooked when I switched to the tap wrench. Fortunately, it shouldn't matter, but if anyone has any suggestions on how to keep this from happening, definitely post in the comments because I can never seem to get this quite right. The last feature we need is the slot that will retain the key that stops the cutter from spinning around, and to do that, we'll be relying on our old friend, the cross-slide milling attachment. I got everything set up and dialed in with an indicator, but there was no way it was going to get this clamp, so it won't shift sideways while trying to make the cut. Which means I've got to disassemble this setup and cut the bottom of the stock off. Finally, with the part mounted laterally in the vise, I was able to cut the keyway as required and then get a key made up to fit. With all of our elements in place, after a little bit of assembly, we should be able to start to cut some gears. Hmm, does that cutter look a little bit wobbly to you? Yep, there it is. I think the angled thread is throwing us off a bit. For now, let's just shim it in place and call it a day. I got a gear blank whipped up and dialed in, and then got a bit nervous and added an extra nut at the top there to act as a lock to keep the blank from rotating under any cutting loads. Good news is, this seems to work. Bad news is the chassis of the gear holder is in the way of the cutter. I tried to use the gear cutter to mill away at it and cause the whole thing to shake itself apart. I think the design is sound though, with a few caveats. First, the chassis in the way of the cutter has to go. B, this needs to be a little bit more rigid, uh, which is a pretty easy fix. I think it can be done by JB welding a little piece of aluminum between the L brackets. And three, a better method to lock the rod in place for cutting would speed things along nicely. With those changes made and the motor mount bolted on this time, we're ready for round two. Well, would you look at that? I would say that this is a pretty respectable gear. It's a good thing this worked first try. It would have taken a really long time to do this if I made a series of mistakes ruining several gear blanks while working on this one. All in all, I'm happy with the design. I think that stepper has a bit more play than it probably should uh, for this in the future, uh, but you can kind of mitigate that by giving a little twist before locking everything in place, so I think it's pretty good. If anything else, I hope you enjoyed the journey to get here. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.